Welcome to Limu TV where you watch and learn. I am your English teacher Sally. Today we're going to talk about punctuation. Before we continue with our lesson, I'd kindly request you to drop your comments, your questions or your concerns or even your greetings on our Facebook page Elimu TV or our Twitter handle at Elimu underscore KE. At the end of this lesson, I'll also give you our SMS number. So before we start our lesson, of course, I'll, I'll welcome you to today's lesson. And our objectives for the day is that we should be able to state the three end marks and state the uses of each. You should also be able to punctuate sentences appropriately. Let us start with the end marks. In English, we have three end marks. They are the period, the question mark, and the exclamation mark. Those are the three end marks in English language. To start us off, let's start with the period, otherwise known as the full stop. It is used in the following places. Number one, it is used at the end of declarative sentences. Example one, Kenya is an African country. That's a declarative sentence. Its end is being signaled by the full stop. Next, it is used at the end of most imperative sentences. Example one, eat your food now. Note the full stop. You, should, you shouldn't throw stones at a beehive. That's a full stop. Follow your heart, desires, but take your brains along. The three are examples of imperative sentences and their end is being signaled by the use of the period otherwise known as the full stop. Next, we have after an indirect question, that is the other use of the full stop. Example one, he used as, he asked us whether we were willing to go. Next, they were asked if they really needed to go out at that time of the day. And the last one, she used she asked if it was okay if she left the baby with a nanny. Those are three examples of indirect questions. Their end, once again, being signaled by the period or the full stop. Full stops are also used during abbreviation. For example, KCSE. Remember here we used capital letters. UN, UNHCR, and USA. You could kindly find the full forms of the abbreviated words in that slide. Next, we have the question mark. And the first use of the question mark, of course, is to, to indicate or uh, to show that the sentence is a question mark or it's, it's a question. Or we could say it's used at the end of an interrogative sentence. For example, where is your teacher? Who broke the glass? Which of the above is not a mammal? Note the use of the question mark at the end of those sentences. But in this case, it's not only being used to show that the question is an, uh, the sentence is in an interrogative one, but also functions as an end mark. Next, we have exclamation mark. It is used at the end of an exclamatory sentence. And exclamatory sentences express deep feelings of the speaker. Examples, surprise, anger, or excitement. So let us look at those examples. You passed. Next, don't be silly. And the next one is help. Stop that thief. Note the use of the exclamation marks. Being used to express the deep feelings of the people speaking these, and of course signaling the end of a sentence. Uh, we have an NB. Having said that the three end marks don't take a full stop, having said that the three are end marks, they don't therefore take a full stop at the end of the sentence. So every time you use the three, there's no need of using a full stop unless it's in a case of direct quotation. The other thing that we're going to look at today is the uses of the comma, otherwise known as the pause. And the first use is to separate items in a list stroke series. Example, she bought bananas, oranges, apples, and peaches. Next example, Job, Dennis, Maureen, and Rona are cousins. The next use of the, full, of the pause or the comma it's used while combining sentences. 
Example 1, the former teacher was tall, but the current one is short. Next, having finished their daily chores, comma, they left for their music classes. Example 3, always tune in Elimu TV, where you watch and learn. Let us move to the next use of the comma. Use a comma to separate the introductory word or phrase from the rest of the sentence. For example, unfortunately, they didn't have enough money to pay for their meals. Note the introductory word in this case is unfortunately, and the comma has been used to separate the introductory word from the rest of the sentence. The next use of the comma, a comma is used to set off the names of people who are being addressed or being spoken to directly. Let us look at this example. Kevin, Melvin, and Job lead the team in the contest. So in this case, it's Kelvin, Melvin, and Job who are being directly addressed by the speaker. Once again, this is signaled by the use of a comma. Uh, the next use of the comma is that it's used to separate the date of the year or the date from the year. Example, May 6, 2016. So the comma comes after the date and then the year follows. The last use of the comma that we're going to look at today is that commas are used to set off direct quotations from the rest of the sentences. For example, unasked, comma, and then the direct quotation. Why can't we have a separate event? Question mark. And again, in quotation marks. So that's the last use of the comma that we're going to look at today. And of course, for a little activity for you to test whether you have we have gained today's objectives or where we have achieved our target. State the three end marks and state their uses too. Activity two, using appropriate examples, state the uses of the comma. And of course, that brings us to the end of our today's lesson. And as I promised, this is our SMS number, 22518. Drop your comments, drop your questions, drop your greetings or anything else that you want to let us know. Not only on SMS, you can also talk to us through our Twitter handle which is at elimu underscore ke or our Facebook page which is elimu tv. That marks the end of our today's lesson. Always keep it elimu tv where you watch and learn. I have been your teacher, Sally. I'll see you next time.